The scientific method is the foundation of science. It requires a model and observational data which are reproducible. Now the model has to correctly predict the data. When it doesn't, that's when the model ceases to apply. But when the model correctly predicts the data, then the scientific community reaches a consensus. Unfortunately, not all politicians seem to understand how the scientific method works. Clearly, a great example is the Big Bang. So, let's hear what some politicians have to say about it. I've come to understand that all that stuff I was taught about evolution and embryology and Big Bang theory, all that is lies straight from the pit of hell. Let's now move on to Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Here is a quote from his interview with the GQ magazine. He was asked, how old do you think the Earth is? Answer, I'm not a scientist, man. I can tell you what recorded history said. I can tell you what the Bible said. But I think that's a dispute among theologians. Now getting back to the science, the evidence for Big Bang is rock solid. There are three pillars to the Big Bang model, which are the expanding universe, cosmic microwave background, and the production of light elements such as helium. Let's focus now on the first pillar, which is the expanding universe. You can imagine the universe as a loaf of raisin bread, with all the raisins being the galaxies. While the bread bakes, it inflates, and so each raisin gets further away from each other raisin. This is more or less what happens in the universe, as long as culinary analogies can go. Here's some data. The blue dots represent supernovae, which are explosions of dying stars. You can watch other videos on this channel to learn more about supernovae. In the graph, we plotted the velocity at which the supernova are moving away from us against their distance. You can clearly notice the linear relationship. Very close to the origin would be the location of the Andromeda galaxy, which is the closest major galaxy to our own Milky Way. Supernovae are useful to identify the distance of their host galaxies. If all of these galaxies are moving away from us, what happened in the past? Was there a point in time when the entire universe was condensed into an extremely small region? Let's run the clock backwards to see how long this would take. If we pick a point on this graph, we can divide its distance coordinate with its velocity coordinate to obtain the time. The expansion of the universe that I just described is already a few decades old. In fact, it was first observed in the 1930s. Now, 20 years later, in the 1950s, it was predicted that the leftover of the very first light emitted in the early universe should be observed today in the microwave region. This observation was made by chance 10 years later. These are the scientists and that is the instrument that led to the discovery of the cosmic microwave background in 1964. Now that we're done with the expansion of the universe and the cosmic microwave background, we're ready to tackle our last pillar, which is the production of light elements such as helium. There are pretty pictures in this image, each representing an important stage in the history of the universe. Only one microsecond after the Big Bang, the entire universe was a dense plasma of quarks and gluons. At barely a hundred microseconds, quarks and gluons have already condensed into protons and neutrons. Fast forward three minutes, and that's the very first time 
the low-mass nuclei were ever created. The colored lines in the plot represent the most abundant light elements produced within 20 minutes from the Big Bang. The y-axis represents the relative abundance with respect to hydrogen of each element. The x-axis represents the density of matter. From cosmic microwave background observations, we know what the density of matter should be. The prediction from cosmic microwave background for the density of ordinary matter intersects the four lines in four points. These points represent what should be the element abundance for each one of these elements. The red circles of relative abundance coincide exactly to the position of intersection between the cosmic microwave background prediction and the theoretical prediction for the relative abundance of each element. There is no denying here that projections very well fit the data. I hope I have convinced you by now that the Big Bang did in fact happen. This is a great example of scientific method in action. We had a model, we had several data, and consistently the model managed to predict and match the data. Nature has spoken and there's nothing one can say that could change my mind or reality.